Good afternoon. It's Marion Gallantly here with another edition of Fashion Flare Friday. So how are you? Is it cooling down in your neck of the woods? Uh, I know we've had some rain here in California, which we're all very excited about. And I understand that we're going to have another kind of a cool spell. Well, actually for the next several days with some more rain. So Yay. Um, and so, of course, when this happens and it's fall and it's cool, guess what I think about? I think about how I can stay cozy and how I can stay warm. How about you? So if you are here live, make sure you just say hi. I always love to know that you're here. And today we're talking about the fall coat trends or maybe just some guidance that I'd like to give you because I know that I certainly am out looking at coats right at the moment and um, uh, maybe as you for fall as you started to clean out that closet a little bit and dust it off some some of your outerwear pieces you notice that hmm maybe I need to freshen up a little bit so that's what I was thinking, that this would be kind of a fun topic as we head into this cool temperature season. And I like to think of um, coats. Coats are kind of to winter what bathing suits are to summer, you know, but actually they're much more important <laughs> than a bathing suit because I think during the summer you can certainly skip out of wearing a bathing suit, right? At least I can. I can figure out all kinds of ways not to have to get into a bathing suit. But in the fall and the winter when it gets cold, I mean, you it's inevitable. You need to be able to keep yourself warm. They're essential for warmth. So um, not only are they super important in terms of keeping you warm, but I think they're super important in in terms of keeping you stylish. And why do I say that? Because, boy, even if you're going to run out to the grocery store or you're going to go run out and meet a friend for lunch and it's cold outside, what's the first thing you do? You grab your coat and you go. And so sometimes that's all people see. They see your coat. They see your shoes. They don't even see what's underneath. They don't see all your lovely accessories. So I guess what I'm trying to encourage you to do is to really think about how important coats are to your personal style. So let's go ahead and get started. Now I have put, hi Sylvia, good to see you. Uh, glad you're here and please don't hesitate to, you know, add comments or, you know, ask questions as we go through. So let's talk about um, some of the key things that I've noticed this season. And in the comments area above this video, you'll also see one of those catalog links that I've included for you so that you'll be able to go back and actually, I'm gonna show you some pictures, but you'll be able to see more than what I'm showing you today in that catalog by category. So let's begin with the first um, category, which I think is very prevalent this year, and it's been coming a bit um, over the last year or so, but this year I'm seeing it everywhere, all different kinds of price points, and that is the faux fur. What I've noticed this year is that the faux fur is a little less hairy, <laughs> and it's more uh, shearling-like than previous seasons. It can be found in every length, it can be found in every color, it can be found in classic neutrals to really bold, bold colors, and even some patterns. So here's an example of, I think, a very fun pattern. Uh, almost looks a little camouflage or combination of camouflage and animal print, I would say. But that is a faux fur, which I think is really fun. And then you can find something that's a little more classic, nubby, but faux fur. 
And of course, when I was talking about bright colors, you know, here is one of those bold, bright colors that definitely gets you, uh, get your attention or gets other people's attention to you. So what are the pros of faux fur? Well, first of all, they're cozy. And number two, they make a statement. And I would say that they can be an, really an instant update to your very classic wardrobe. So this is a way, you know, I always say that there's always a way, whether it's shoes or coats or jewelry, to go ahead and update for the season. Um, to update, um, I don't know, just a freshness in your closet without having to buy a whole new wardrobe or a whole new outfit. One piece can really take you a long way. So faux fur will do that. Now, what is the con of wearing a faux fur? Well, as you can see, you know, they can what? Be a little overwhelming. And so what you really need to think about is if you're a petite individual or a fuller figured gal, this might be a little harder for you to wear. So it's gonna be real important for you to pay attention to the details, things like um, whether it has a belt or not. If you have a waist, a belt would be a good thing. A shorter length, like you see right here, is gonna be better than something that's a full length that might just really envelop you if you're a petite. So think about, again, the things I always teach you about, and that is paying attention to your proportions, paying attention to your coloring, paying attention to your style personality as you make these selections. So is faux fur for you? That's the question. All right, the next trend that I'm seeing a lot of is what I call the beige beauty. All right, it's a, beige is a major color trend. We could call it camel, we can call it beige, we can call it a lot of different things, but this is what I'm talking about. Okay, very classic color, isn't it? But it, right now, it's a major trend for 2022. Um, this would be what I would call a very classic choice for our outerwear in beige. However, you can get beige in all kinds of looks. So there you had a wool coat, here you have a puffer jacket, and in the catalog, you'll see a variety of other beige type of coats and jackets that you might wanna consider for this year. Now, what I would just remind you is that there are warm beiges and there are cool beiges. So depending on your personal coloring, you're going to wanna to go ahead and pick what works best for your coloring. And let me just show you again. So this would be a warmer temperature. This would be a cooler temperature. All right, so beige beauties. The fact is that the color is classic, it's timeless, and really it's neutral enough to go with everything. The con, as I said, is that certain beiges, you know, may not be your best color. And so you just have to really pay attention to it. And actually beige sometimes, depending on the cut of the, of the garment, can look a little matronly. So you just wanna make sure that you're really paying attention to all these details to keep you contemporary and modern, no matter your age. So let me see if I have any comments or questions. I do not, but don't hesitate. Please, if you see anything or as I say something and you want to ask me a question about it, go ahead and jump in. All right, so we talked about the faux fur and we talked about all the beige beauties that are out there this year. The next thing would be the puffer coat, a coat or a vest. So that's what I'm wearing today. I am wearing a puffer vest. I live in California, so it's got to be really, really cold for me to want to put on a full getup of puffer. 
All right, so how about you? But I can tell you the comfort and finding the puffer jackets that are lightweight but give a lot of warmth, I think is the key. You can find them again in every shade of color from, you know, pastels all the way to bowls to a neutral like what I have on today. And um, let's see what I have here for you. I have, here would be an example um, of a full length puffer. So, you know, again, for those of you that live in really cold environments or where, you know, you get a lot of rain, this full length is gonna really protect you nicely. And of course, this has the faux fur collar to really keep you warm. So also great for the snow. Whereas this puffer that I showed a little earlier, again, you know, it's going to be warm, but it's not going to give you as much coverage. So what are your needs? You know, always think about where you live. What are your needs? What do you do when you get outside? And then make your choices accordingly. So the pro of a puffer is that it's, that it's cozy, um, that it is a little trendy. And the con is that it can make you look like the Michelin man if you're not careful. So, you know, especially for petite women. So think about that and look at again some of the ideas that I put in the catalog and see what your thoughts on. Try them on, you know, zip them up, turn around, give yourself a 360 and see what you think. All right. Now, next we have my favorite thing for living here in California, and that's the category of ponchos and capes. And I just love, I, I have quite a slew of these. And depending on if I'm gonna run out to the grocery store, or I'm going to go play bridge with girlfriends, or I'm gonna go have lunch, or I'm going to a meeting, I grab, you know, Usually it's going to be a wrap like this. It's going to be a cape rather than a poncho. A poncho is definitely going to give you a more casual feel. But I do have a couple of ponchos myself. I actually like this one very much because it's the black and the white, which um, is really working nicely with my hair these days. So, you know, that's kind of tempting to me. Um, but again think of your climate and this is also something that you can throw into your handbag or to your tote bag and so when you're inside if you want to take off your coat and you want to still stay warm and cozy then having something in your tote that you can pull out and just put over your shoulders as you're sitting at a conference table or sitting at a dining table is also a wonderful strategy all right, so what are, so the pro is that I think that that look can give you quite a nice dramatic flair to your outfits. And that's part of my style recipe. I like to have a little touch of drama. So the cape does that for me. It also can give you great texture. It can give you some great patterns and colors. Um, the con is once again that anything that is huge, a huge wrap, can really dwarf my petite clients. And just pay attention to the bulk and pay attention to the detail or the finished details uh, so that they're in the areas that you want them to be, not where you do not want to call attention. So when I say that, You know, you see the white trim there. So where is that hitting on your body? And is that going to be a place that you want to call attention to? Because we obviously notice that and our eye goes right to it. So if it's sitting on a full hip or a full bottom, that may not be where you want to call attention to. So always pay attention to the lines and the details in your garments. All right, so next category is leather. And really there's never a bad time to embrace leather, that's for sure. 
And today it's, you can find real leather, you can find lambskin, you can find faux leathers, you can find all different price points, uh, all kinds of different colors. Um, so you want to think about what style of gar what style of jacket or what style of coat is going to work for you. Now, if I were just a little bit taller, boy, wouldn't I love this full length leather jacket. And look, she's paired that over, you know, her casual jeans and booties and a turtleneck and off she goes. And it has made a statement. So I would say that, you know, leather is something that is always chic. Um, if the piece is chosen right, it can be edgy if you want it to be. And really, it's always in style. The con would be that some leathers, more so than faux leathers, some leathers are heavy and bulky and almost a little stiff. So be careful of that because they can then end up being a little boxy on your body. So you just want to, again, really try things on and look how it flows over the body that you have before you make your choice. So high quality leather or faux leathers, oh my goodness, faux leathers everywhere in pants today, in um, skirts, and I know we're not talking about that, but I just wanted to mention that leather is very, very prevalent. So do you have a piece of leather in your closet? And if not, maybe a leather coat or a leather jacket would be a place to start. All right, the next is shearling. Let me pull out my picture here. I think shearling can have a real elegant flair. Now in this particular picture, I wouldn't say that the posture of this model is, <laughs> is showing us elegance, but I think the colors are elegant. And um, I just think that we'll see shearling in a lot of different ways. We'll see it full like you full on like you see it right here or you may even see it just in um, trims so if you just want a little bit of it go for it so I think that this you know shearling has kind of that the, the pro would be that it has sort of a luxurious feel and a luxurious hand to it with a little bit of a bohemian flair so if that's part of your style personality, that might be something that you want to take a look at. Here it is in a moto jacket, which I think is also very fun. Now, shearling can be um, expensive and it can wear out over time. So, you know, um, if you're looking for price point, then just pay attention to, you know, the higher the quality of the shearling, the more expensive it's going to be, and typically the longer it will last, but not always. So you, you just need to decide whether that's an investment that is going to be good for you. Next category would be the timeless tweed coats. And I think tweeds certainly happen to be a a sign of fall. It's a classic texture. It's a, a kind of a conservative, I would say, conservative or traditional um, fabrication. And so if your style personality includes that classic and that traditional wording, then tweed may just be right for you. And there's a lot of tweed out this particular season. Um, and you're going to see it not only in coats, but I can tell you I've been seeing it on loafers and handbags and then, of course, these coats. So the pro is that it does add interest and texture to outfits. There are several um, tweed coats that I put in the catalog, but because of the color, they, weren't, they wouldn't show up on camera here real well. So I chose this Ralph Lauren tweedy kind of in a got a little bit of a olivey touch to it which i think is very pretty and very classic for those of you that can wear that color all right so the con might be that eh, maybe it's looked at as a little stuffy 
So that's where it's really important to choose a modern shape to offset the classicness or the conservative nature of the fabric. And lastly, we have the wool overcoat. This is the most classic and probably the most versatile outerwear piece on the whole list that I've given you. And it is essential to winter wear, I think, as a great pair of boots happen to be. So you want to really choose this carefully. But remember, it's something that you can slip on and go out the door and immediately update your look. So think about it. Do you want to do it in one of your best neutral colors? Or do you want to do it in a fun color? Is that something that you could add to your wardrobe to really add some pizzazz? Or you could add, guess what? Some fur to it to make it quite elegant. That's a beautiful piece, isn't it? So again, um, always appropriate, cozy, chic, and wool coats transition very nicely from the office into an evening out. Um, the con would be that they can be heavy. 100% wool can be heavy. So we're seeing a lot of wools that are wool blends that might be a bit lighter. And for you know some clients, they won't even consider wool at all because they find it scratchy. So even if it's lined up around the neck, sometimes they will start to you know do this kind of a thing. So pay attention to that as well. Now this one I love because I, well, I love the fact that it's simple. It's got a, a bit of an oversized fold back collar, which I love. And of course that's an accent color that I love to wear. So this is very tempting for me, <laughs> for sure. And here is another in a charcoal gray and a little sportier. So again, you can find your wool coats depending on your personal style and, and, and your personal lifestyle from more casual to very dressy with the faux fur on it or with the real fur on it, whichever you prefer. So let me see if I have any questions here. Hi, Barbara. Yes, in Northern California, we wear puffer, puffers year round because of fog, summer puffers, winter puffers, absolutely, and vest puffers. So I really love vest puffers when I don't need to be in, you know, engulfed in puffer, but I need the warmth. Patty, hi, good to see you. Uh, Poncho, yeah, okay, I have a gorgeous multi gray Peruvian fringe one, decades old, but so warm and it's the right color for you. Absolutely, it is. And uh, Sylvia, what about hoods? Um, are you talking about hoods on coats? I presume you are. You know, I think it's a personal preference. Um, it's not something that I wear or that I like, um, but I think, you know, if you're in a lot of rain or you're in snow and you want to be able to have the ease of just flipping that hood up as you run in somewhere, I think absolutely. So think about functionality. What do you need to wear? I'd rather hold an umbrella. Um, maybe because, you know, I don't want to mess up my hair. <laughs> I don't know. I've never been a hoodie person, even in casual wear. So, but of course, they're very on trend, as you know. And so would you wear them, Sylvia? I'm, I'm curious. All right, so I'm just gonna, gonna say it once again, that I think coats are really important. Because as I said, when you walk out the door and you're all dolled up underneath and then you slip that coat over, if that coat is an afterthought, you've just deflated your style down to zero. So think about how important your coat is and just make sure that you give it the credence and give it the attention that it really deserves in terms of picking out the right style, the right fabrication, the right cut, and the right fit 
and the right thing for your lifestyle and for your style personality. And Sylvia says, yes, she would wear hoods. So see, there's your answer. Um, you just have to ask yourself these questions. Is it something I really would enjoy having? And is it part of my style that I enjoy showing off? So it's always about you making sure that you're comfortable in your style, excuse me, in your style, and that you've got a really great one, two, maybe even three coats that you're ready to go out in. So maybe a casual, everyday run errands kind of coat, like Barbara was saying, puffers. Maybe it's then going out to um, maybe, a, let's say something that's a little dressier. So maybe it's gonna be going to a business meeting depending on the kind of business you're in. So if I were going to a business meeting, I wouldn't do a puffer. I would save that more for, you know, my social kinds of things. Um, and then if you're going out in the evening, definitely having something that is going to be, you're going to feel comfortable in and you're going to feel confident in. I literally have, it's not a true velvet, but it is a, hmm, I don't even remember, um, long black um, coat that is not a velvet, not a velveteen, but it's brushed to where it looks like it with a beautiful faux lambs uh, collar on it and big cuffs. And I have had that thing in my closet, I bet for 20 years. And I get it out when we go to black tie events. So having one piece too that you just know when you need it, you don't have to go out and buy it, but you know, you keep it because it's such a classic piece that you can keep for a long time. That's another thing to think about. And the time you buy those kinds of pieces is when you can find them on sale, in my opinion. So um, if you're planning to buy a new coat this season, you know, think about the different categories and go to the catalog. So the faux fur, the beige beauty, the puffer coat, the poncho and the cape, the leather piece, the shearling piece, the tweed, or the wool overcoat. So think about those, go ahead and get some inspiration in the catalog and, you know, have some fun, you know, checking things out and get ready for what I hope is going to be a cooler and rainier of uh, fall and winter season. <clears throat> Sylvia, yes, you said umbrellas are cumbersome to me. I have very short hair. Yes, okay, easier to wear, isn't it? <clears throat> All right, and Patty, saddle leather knee length coat, so gorgeous. Saddle leather knee length coat, so gorgeous, but not the best brown for me, so I wear a heavy scarf in the perfect color for my face. I agree, not a good color for you. So I would, unless it's a very cool um, saddle leather, and I doubt it is. So, you know, that might be something that, again, you just think about long term. You've done one thing where you've actually put a scarf over it that's perfect for your face. That's one way of doing it. But, you know, it's also maybe an opportunity to begin looking because coats are so prevalent this year that this might be the season for you to add something in your cooler colors. Joey, love, love, love your outfit. So chic, just like you. <laughs> well, this is going to be, I'm going to be totally transparent here. This is my, I have to leave. I'm have, we're having house guests this weekend. So I have to leave after the live and I have to go out and do some grocery shopping and some plant shopping. And so this is, how I like to do it with my puffer vest. So there you go. All right, my friends, I look forward to seeing you next week. If you happen to buy a new coat, take a picture of yourself in it and go ahead and post it here in our group so we can all be inspired. All right, happy weekend. Take care. Bye now.